Hi everyone, it's a Ticket to Christ. Thank you for tuning back in. We're starting on a new series, um, focusing on change, um, that it's never too late to change. Um, no matter the circumstance of your life, God is able to make a way um, even when things look impossible or they look really bad um, or awful things are happening in your family. God is able to make a way. And we're looking at Adam and Eve, the family of Adam and Eve. You know, the family of Adam and Eve was devastated because of their own choices, because of the choices Adam and Eve made. Um, so we see even from the beginning, their small family being just broken apart through sin and as a result of um, their own decisions in the garden. We're going to start with uh, Genesis 4, 25 to 26, and then we'll talk about the backstory after that. So it says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So let's break this down a little bit. What do you notice in verse 25? What, what I'm seeing here is that Eve is what Eve said, is that she spoke. We see Eve speaking, I think, three times um, in the Bible. First in the Garden of Eden. Um, then when, the, you know, when the serpents was talking to her, we, that's the longest conversation we saw with Eve. Then after that, when she gave birth to Cain and Abel, and now when she's given birth to Seth. And what she said in this instance was, God hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Why do you think she said that? Why would she say that God appointed me another seed instead of Abel. Why would she say that? She still, Cain is her son. You know, why didn't she count Cain? Why is she, she seed here is a specific um, reference to Abel because Abel was um, who she felt would um, bring about the deliverance that God had promised. Remember when in Genesis 2, God said that Eve's seed, he's the seed of the woman, would uh, crush the head of the serpent. He says, and your seed will crush, I'll put enmity between your seed and his seed and her seed, and her seed will crush the head of the serpent, right? Which is the devil. Um, so Eve was expecting a child who would crush the head of the devil, who would bring about the salvation that God had promised from when, you know, he made that promise. And so that's what she's referring to here. She, you know, she didn't realize that it would take thousands of years before Jesus came, that God was would have to... Um, set up a holy nation first or set up a, a set apart people so that he could have the structure that Jesus would be able to be, you know, to come. So um, that's why she's saying that she had a replacement for Abel. But Seth wasn't the replacement for Abel. But Seth, through Seth, men started to call upon the name of the Lord, you know, once his son was born. And so there was hope again for humanity because when you think about it right um you know the story of Cain or Abel if you don't if you've never read it uh great to take time to read it Cain was jealous of his brother Abel and murdered him um because Abel gave a more uh, gave the right offering to God and Cain did not bring the right offering to God and so he was rejected and God uh, counseled him and said, well, repent. If you change and do what's right, you will be accepted. Um, but uh, resist sin. Sin is trying to master you, but steward your life. You know, steward your anger, steward your temper. Rise up above it and repent. But Cain did not rise up above his temper, above his 
hurt pride above his rage against um, and the jealousy. And he murdered Abel. And uh, when God confronted him, he was rude. You know, he was very disrespectful, uh, saying, am I my brother's keeper? And um, was not repentant and uh, just hard heart. And so he was driven from the presence of the Lord. And uh, he went on to, um, you know, have a lot of ambition and set up a city and bore, you know, had a whole lineage. You have the whole lineage of Cain in Genesis 4. But his lineage was just full of people who were not following God. And ultimately, uh, one of his uh, descendants uh, was a murderer just like him. And so we see that humanity was in a state, you know, as a result of the choice that Adam and Eve made in the garden. And uh, so for Eve and Adam, it must have been very devastating, must have been a, a time of just grief, of just... Um, sorrow to see Abel dead and Cain just going his own way, walking away from God. And so the hope of Seth here must have been tremendous for them, that people would start calling on the name of the Lord. But it took for this to happen um, for them to do things differently. Even though Cain was still alive and all of his descendants uh, wreaking havoc, Adam and Eve were still able to make a way with Seth because ultimately from Seth's lineage came Noah, right? And Noah was the only person who found favor with the Lord. Noah and his family were saved, eight, right? And as a result of Noah, humanity was saved. And from Noah's son Shem came Abraham, and from Abraham... Isaac and Jacob, and from them, the 12 um, patriarchs, and from Judah came David, and um, Jesus eventually came, just as uh, the, you know, the God predicted in Genesis chapter 2, I think it's chapter 2, chapter 2 or 3, um, one of those chapters. And so it eventually happened, but through no, but through Noah, right? But if Adam and Eve hadn't changed and done things differently, that would have been it for humanity. And looking at the state of their life, that they brought death and devastation into on humanity, you know, you it would have you would have thought there is no hope, there is no way to fix this. But we see here that there was a way to fix it. And um, they just did what God said to do, taught taught their children right, taught set right and, and Enos. And eventually things righted itself. You know, even though humanity got really bad, there was still hope um, because of Noah. And so no matter what has happened in your life, no matter what you're seeing, if you have kids that are not making good choices, your life is in turmoil, you could look at this family, the family of Adam and Eve, from the very beginning and see bad, very bad things, devastating things happen, but they still were able to um, learn from them and make better choices uh, through Seth and, um, you know, have a better outcome in the long term. Now, it's not that they didn't have to deal with the consequences they did. They had to, you know, live with the devastation of Abel's death. They had to see Cain carrying on, you know, and um, all of his uh, lineage just disregarding God. But they also were able to have a blessing through Seth because through Seth, you see Enoch. Remember Enoch who in in uh, Genesis 5, 22, he was the one who walked with God. And God uh, took him, you know, he translated him. Enoch never died. And, and you see other righteous men and women um, as a result. And so there is hope, you know. These examples in the Bible are given to teach us and to show us that with God, all things are possible. 
with a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can start all over. You can begin anew. Um, you get to become a new creation, a new person. Like, you know, starting all over, the Lord calls it being born again, right? To Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And so take a hold of that lifeline. If you have made bad choices, bad decisions in your life, take a hold of it. If you're a Christian, um, but you have backslidden and fallen, you know, by the wayside, repent, grab a hold of it. With God, you can start again, you know, come back into a relationship with God. There is a parable of the lost son. That shows that God is willing to have you. And if you have the desire and heart, it means God is calling you back, back to him. All you have to do is repent with a sincere heart and come back into a relationship with him. You know, if you're a Christian and you've been walking with the Lord, but hard and devastating things have happened because you've made unwise choices, you can also bring those before God. And seek after him, seek after his wisdom, seek after his spirit. If, you're follow, if you are following the wrong doctrine and so got led astray, you know, by false teachers, it's not too late. With God, all things are possible. Jesus said so. He says nothing is impossible with God. There's no life beyond God. There's no circumstance he cannot fix or change. And even if that one circumstance doesn't, you know, is doesn't change. He can move you. He can change you. He can enable you to rise above it and to find a, and make a way from it that results in good things. Just like with Seth and just like with Enos and eventually through to Noah, you know. So um, your life is full of hope if you surrender your life to the Lord and if you, you know, follow his principles, you know, get into the word, start reading it consistently every day for yourself and get to know him for your own self. I promise you, you'll never regret it, beloved. I hope you're having an amazing day. God loves you so much. Take care.